My sip and stay adventure through Central Oregon has me spending my days exploring the many outdoor recreational opportunities that exist in the area. After a day of hiking, nothing sounds better than a cold beer. And Central Oregon has over 20 craft breweries that are all leaving their mark with new and experimental beers. Today I am excited to meet up with Trevor Hammond, owner and brewmaster of Bridge 99 Brewing in Bend, Oregon, where he is in the process of starting a fresh batch of red ale. To start off, we got our uh, grain we just milled up next door. So this is all malted barley and there's uh, several different ones in here. Let's see, we got some T-Row, some Munich, some Crystal 40, and some rye in here. So this is our red. There's hundreds of different grains and hundreds of different hops and hundreds of different yeasts out there. So, and your combinations are almost endless. Here's a regular two row. And 90% of your recipes is just a, a regular two row. Then you get into your roasted malts like a Crystal 60 and you can see the color difference, it's more red. So, like this has, we'll have some of that in there and you'll get some of that red color in there. And then if you're doing like a porter, a little bit of this it's all roasted up even more. So same malted barley, it's just roasted at different levels. We're warming our water up, we're gonna pump it over into our mash tun. It has a false bottom in there. And we're gonna steep this grain for about an hour. When we're done steeping, we're gonna pump out of here and pump back into the boil kettle. And at that time, we're also gonna be pumping some hot liquor over the top and rinsing out that grain to get more sugars out, get the last of it. We've got a couple different hops with about four different additions. So we'll do the hops. Once this is in, in the kettle, we're boiling after we've pumped out of there. So we'll add hops and we add them at different stages. So that way, when you're drinking your beer, you're getting those hops at different times in the beer and not just all at once and you're not just getting all bitterness out of the beer. So it helps with the balance of the beer. Uh, I like to make sure there's uh, you're still getting different malts, characters, along with the hops. So that you're getting a little bit of everything, you get a little of the yeast tones in there. You want to get a nice balance of the beer. End of August, there's a, usually what people do is a fresh hop or a wet hop batch. Um, and that's where the hops are picked directly off the vines and brought to us. They're still wet, they're, they're heavy. And we'll put them in uh, the kettle as we're brewing and it makes a nice fresh batch that's directly right off the vine. What's nice about that is you get more of that real bright fruity tone um, that you just can't, it's like picking a grapefruit off of a tree first thing in the morning and it's uh, still cold and eating it right then. A majority of our hops come from Tumble Hop Company, local here, just down the road. And what's really cool is like we're talking the fresh hop batch, they're able to cut some vines first thing in the morning for us about nine o'clock and bring them to us by about 10 and we'll have them going into the kettle. So pretty almost about an hour window there and we'll have them right from the vine right into the kettle. So it makes it kind of fun. This is the wort. So it's the pre-beer basically. Sugar water is essentially what's going on. We're pulling all the sugars out of the, the malted barley. Uh, it's been steeping like tea. So you want to taste that so it's gonna be really sweet it's not gonna have doesn't have any yeast yet doesn't have any hop yet hasn't been boiled or anything it's just kind of it's like, like a like naked beer right <laughs> it's gonna come out of here it's gonna go in the boil kettle the boil kettle is gonna boil for full rolling boil for full hour so that's gonna sanitize it basically sterilize it um, and then it's gonna go in those fermenters after we've added hops and then we're gonna add some yeast um, but it'll be in the fermenter for a couple weeks you like that. <laughs> it tastes pretty good. Yeah, it's kind of it almost like you can have that for breakfast. Almost like honey. Yeah, you get yeah. A little, yeah, it's like almost like a sweet uh, cereal. Yeah, kind of tastes like a oat. Tastes yeah. like a breakfast drink. Yeah, yeah. Boy, you could just bottle this. There you go, all. breakfast drink. Yeah. So, is there alcohol in this? No alcohol in that. Oh, see. No alcohol. There yeah. You go. Your Not until you eat yeast. Your yeast is going to eat the sugars and convert. Makes makes two things. It makes CO two. That's like the off the little t hoses and it creates alcohol. Wow, I so. like it. <laughs> Let's go try the finished product okay. in your tasting room. <laughs> okay, so I tasted this um, out, straight out of the barrel. Would you call it a barrel? Out of the, out of the mash tun. Out of the mash tun, um, mm -hmm. before it was completed. Yeah. So we tasted it in that stage, and this is what it, would, this is what it turns out to be. Once it's yeah, started. after fermentation, hops are added, uh, yeast is added, and it's done with fermentation. So you're getting the, before you're getting the wort, um, so it's 
it's not beer yet, it's basically a sugar water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love your beers are very different, all of them. Try to make, that's one of the things I like to, I want each beer to have its own personality. That's our lager. Now our lager, we do small amounts of that because it has to be done at a cold, colder temperature. Lager yeast fermented about 56 degrees. So in that being the case, the lager yeast is very slow and it takes about six weeks to, for that fermentation process instead of two weeks like an ale. So that's a big lager, it's a 6%. So I want to show you, you could do a lager that has a lot of flavor mm -hmm. instead of normally you get a lager pilsner that's kind of watery and not a lot of flavor, but that one has a lot of flavor to it to show that they can have a lot of flavor really like and, and it, it's nice and light and it is a nice summery beer. So this is the our Wizard Falls IPA uh, named after the Wizard Falls uh, on the Metolius River there in Camp Sherman by Bridge 99. Mm, that's really nice because I don't usually like super hoppy beers and this one has a high IBU and what does that mean? International bittering units so. That's how you measure it right? Yeah. yeah. And so typically this would be quite bitter Yep. But you figured out how to make it kind of nice, very easy to drink, and try to, I would like this. Yeah, try to go for a nice balance in there. Um, to me, I, it's hops are like a spice, and so it's easy to throw in so much that you can't taste anything else. And, you know, an IPA is more hop forward, but yet I still want to have a little bit of malt in the background. So you're not just getting only hops. So you should get a little bit of everything in there. Keep a nice that balance. That might be the first IPA I've ever liked. It's a big compliment. <laughs> awesome. Do you want to try before it goes in the barrel and then after it comes Okay, out? okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get all our barrels come from Ben Sterling. I use the I use the rye whiskey barrel. This is a little stronger. So this is not barrel age. And that's, this is, is yeah, that is not barrel age. So that's wow. prior to it going in the barrel. Big difference in the color. Okay, I'm going to try them back to back. Okay. I already know I like this one because I tried it and it tastes delicious. Mm. So it's got it's an imperial porter, uh, three different chocolate malts are in there. And then what happens is this goes in the barrel. It's going to age in there for about three, three to four months. Oh, and it's, that's and it's totally gonna, different. It's going to take a second for your palate to switch over. You get a lot of wow. more whiskey in the front. Yes. And then the second time, you'll it'll mellow down because it takes a second for your palate to switch. Wow. Yeah, definitely different. Wow, it's totally different. Totally different. <laughs> wow. More of a sipping beer for sure. Mm -hmm. These barrels are from Ben Distillery, local distillery, and it's their rye whiskey. We uh, do a, about a nine and a half percent beer goes in here. Uh, it's a one-time use barrel for Ben Distillery. It's a one-time use barrel for us. So they tell us when they've dumped their whiskey We'll get it from them. The whiskey is soaked up into the barrel and we're gonna put in a fermented beer. It's already going and it's gonna set in here for about three to four months. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull the oaks and vanillas and whiskey in with the beer and be a nice blend and mix so that you get a little whiskey and a little bit of beer flavors and tones and and all that goodness all in one one package. So, so these come wow, like this. Wow, interesting. And what happens yeah. is I fill it right out of the tap here. Uh-huh. And then I'll bring, put this on. So I slide that down into here. Wow. And then there you go. Yeah, it's Beer cool. done up. Well, that hit the spot. I left with a few crowlers and, of course, a bottle of that barrel-aged porter and continued on my sip-and-stay journey through Central Oregon. 